All right, get what we want through communication. Here's the thing. We teach people how to treat us. Did you know that? We teach people how to treat us. It's like you come home after a rough day at work and the house is a disaster and you start yelling at your family. You better start picking up after yourself, young man, because I work hard all day long. I don't have time to pick up after you, and I mean it. And then what do they hear? Wah, 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 wah. Hey, they're picking it up. Cool. <laughs> a little background on me. I completely overmarried. <laughs> My husband's a saint to put up with me. Awesome, awesome man. Um, but we have some issues because he's an engineer. <laughs> Seriously, the man can fold a fitted sheet into a postage stamp. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before. I don't know how many of you are like me. It's like corner, corner. Oh, whatever, shove it in. <laughs> Anybody, just shove it in. Go. Oh, see, you're my people. I knew this. It's Hope it doesn't fall out on you when you open it up, right? It's like, what, we've got time for this? Look, and some people back there are showing the folding. Is that what you're doing over there? And here's how you get it to be a postage stamp. You've got to, the corners go, what? Who's got time for this? So I don't fold. Why should I? He's just going to redo it. He's just going to redo it. So we're teaching people how to treat us all the time. With communication to get what we want, I think we need to speak in other people's language. Communication is a very important aspect to any relationship. When a relationship is lacking in communication, negative outcomes may result. Change your voicemail greeting. Change your voicemail greeting. If your voicemail says, hi, this is Bob. Bob, I'm either on the line or not at my desk. No crap. <laughs> I don't know who started this stupid greeting, but it's gotta stop. I'm either on the line or not at my desk. That doesn't help me. What bugs me about voicemails, when people call and they leave their number so fast, you gotta listen to the message 10 times to get it. Right? Oftentimes, they'll speak slowly until their number. <laughs> this John, I got a problem with my lawn. If you can call me, 214-474-477, you know. <laughs> Listen to that message 10 times, get a digit each time, right? Or what's even worse is when they leave their name and you can't understand it. Have you ever had this? It's like, hi, Christine, this is Fafa. <laughs> and like an idiot, you call the person back, is Fafa there? <laughs> right? They're like, who? I don't know. They called me first. I have no idea who this is. You, know? you don't know what they want. You don't know a good time to reach them. Help them. Help them help you by not wasting your time. Because it's these little things that eat up your time. Trying to figure out who Papa and you tell them, who's who know who this is? Everyone else has to listen to the message. Papa, I don't know. And then and you're wasting everyone else's time trying to figure out this person. So, what you do is you leave your greeting. Hi, this is Bob. Please leave your name and number slowly. The nature of your call, a good time for me to reach you. That's what I want to know. Name and number slowly, the nature of your call, what do you want? And when can I call you that I'm actually going to get a person? Help people help you. Now, I have to warn you, your moron friends will call. My number is 714. <laughs> they will. I changed my voicemail. I'm saving so much time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna tell Miss Johnson that her husband's not gonna make. Maybe I should go on a secret mission. When you need to take a break and you don't have time, here's what I want you to do. It's called go on a secret mission. Here's what you do. You grab a folder, book, something on your desk. A clipboard works great. So if you have a clipboard, get one of those. Then you pick it up and you walk briskly for three minutes to nowhere. <laughs> if people try to stop you, give them the hand. Yeah, no, I got it. Excuse me, Abby. <laughs> you come back, you put your stuff down, and you say, Mission accomplished. <laughs> a mental break to a physical break is exactly what you need sometimes. 
a mental break to a physical break. Now, some of you have been going on these secret missions for a long time. <laughs> you didn't have a name for it, now you do. But here's the thing, it's a secret. How many of you are here with a coworker? Okay, all right. It's a secret. So is it, what's your name, Tim? Tim. So you see Tim cruising by? Don't go, hey, where are you going, Tim? I know what you're doing. Get back to your desk. Yeah. When you see Tim cruising by, grab your stuff and follow. <laughs> that tip alone worth the price of admission, seriously. The secret mission, it is hilarious and it totally works. I was in a flight where the guys in front of me were having a fight over space, which I think is funny because men typically take up more physical space on planes. This is nothing scientific, it's just what I observe as a frequent traveler. Okay. Men get on planes, we're like, yeah. <laughs> Women do not do this. When we get on a plane, we're like, whoop. <laughs> Isn't that right? It's like, I would need an armrest. I'll just use my chest. And some of us are like, bummer. <laughs> Everything is not bigger in Texas, <laughs> unfortunately. So the guys in front of me are having a fight over space. The guy in the middle is reading his paper like this. And the guy in the aisle says, you mind reading your paper in your own space? And the guy in the middle said, I paid a lot of money for this seat. I can take up all the space I want. The guy in the aisle flicked the paper. He flicked it. We hadn't, we hadn't even taken off yet. We're just sitting there. And it, you ever witness these things and you start bonding with the people around you? Oh my God. You finally talk to your neighbor over something and uh, the flight attendant comes back. What's going on? He's reading paper in my space. She, he flicked my paper and <laughs> it's like, Flash back to third grade. <laughs> so she runs up, gets the co-pilot. Co-pilot comes back, says to the guy in the middle, get your stuff, follow me. <gasps> They're kicking this guy off the plane. We're all looking down the aisle. First class. <laughs> See, you could hear everybody going, what? What? You know, I wanted to hit the flight attendant button. Bink, she's touching me. We'll be right back with more Christine. And it's dramatically improved Jim's love life. Find ways to add more humor into your life in all areas, at work, at home with your family, friends. It's healthy, it's good for you. Raise your right hand. I hereby promise to remember this stuff, to use these ideas, and get calcium from my funny bone. You guys are awesome, I love you. Thank you so much. Thanks for staying. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Please. Woohoo! Yay, Jacksonville! Woohoo! You need a hand? You might need a hand. There you go. Thanks, everyone.